than the other issues. So the first issue that everybody asks about is why is there so much confusion and understanding when the month begins and when it ends? Why can't we all agree upon one particular date and the world would be a simpler place? Well, the reason for this difference goes back to a number of issues. Our Prophet Sallallahu said that Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi fa in ghumma alaykum faqdiru laha that fast when you see the moon and break your fast when you see the moon and if it is cloudy then iqdirullah which means complete the days to 30. So what this means is that we began the fast of the month by one of two methods. Number one, you see the moon on the 9th of the 29th. Number two, if you don't see the moon or if it is cloudy, then you continue to 30 and then the next day will be the first of the month. And the scholars have differed and we don't have to get into the difference. Do, does it require one or two witnesses? Some scholars said one witness is enough, some said two. This is beyond the scope of this class. But things would be easy had it not been complicated by two issues. The hadith is pretty simple but it's complicated by two issues. The first issue, what if somebody sees the moon in a locality that is not your locality? Are you obliged to follow somebody from another city or another country or another continent? In our time, somebody calls you up and says they've seen the moon you know, in Timbuktu and you're in America. Are you obliged to follow somebody else or is every community restricted to its own visual sighting? This is the first difference of opinion and this difference of opinion goes back to the earliest of times. And even amongst the scholars of the Tabi'un, Taba Tabi'un, the earliest generations, they differed amongst themselves. They differed that does the city follow its own visual sighting or can a city or can a group follow the sighting of a neighboring city. And in those days they didn't have telephones but they had fast Postal services, they call them barids. They had them horse riders that would go and spread news as fast as humanly possible at the time. So they travel long distances in relatively faster times. Uh, they would have horses that would go and there would be fresh horses waiting for them, change horses, continue riding, and the moon and, and the news would be spread faster than the average person could travel. So the question arises. Are you restricted to your own or do you, do you follow the local uh, uh, or international sightings? Scholars of the past differed. Some of them said that the Ummah should follow one sighting to the greatest extent possible. And others said no, every locality or every, in Arabic is matla, and matla means every segment of the earth that has its own moon sighting, right? Because everybody knew, even back then they knew, that uh, if you look at the latitudes of the earth, every latitude, every segment of the earth has its own moon sighting. So they said only the Muslims living in the same latitude, that would be those who are required to follow the same moon sighting. Now, this difference of opinion is somewhat theoretical. Why? Because since the earliest of times, the Ummah has never been united over one Eid. The Muslims in China could never have learned about the moon sighting from the Muslims of Andalus and vice versa. There was simply no means of communication. For over 13 centuries or 12 centuries, the Muslims have never been united over the beginning and ending of the Eid and this has never caused any problems. One of the reasons why it hasn't caused problems is because every governorship, every principality, every small political entity, the governor or the khalifa or whatever would announce and the whole portion of that world would follow along. And this has been the case as we said historically for the last 12 centuries. Before the coming of the modern era and before the breaking up of the ummah into the modern nation states. So the fact of the matter is that those who are calling for a unified citing it has never existed in the history of the Ummah. And as I said, think about it. The Muslims of Andalus and the Muslims of China. Do you really think that there could be a visual sighting that everybody would follow? And in fact, there are authentic narrations in Sahih Muslim that clearly shows that even in the time of the Sahaba, they understood that there would be different moon sightings for different areas. And there is a famous tradition, uh, which is the tradition of Quraib, uh, who was a freed slave. He traveled from Damascus. Muawiyah was in Damascus. He traveled from Damascus to Medina. And Ibn Abbas asked him, maybe if we can close the door, because there's... No Ibn Abbas asked him, when did you guys start fasting? So they said, we saw the moon and started fasting. We saw the moon Sunday night. We started fasting Monday. 
So Ibn Abbas said, as for us, we didn't see the moon and we started fasting Tuesday. In Damascus, they, start, they started Monday. In Medina, they started Tuesday. And Ibn Abbas said, and we're not going to change what our Prophet told us, because he's the one who told us, fast when you see the moon, and break your fast when you see the moon. And if you don't see it, complete 30 days. We completed 30, you guys completed 29, and this was the way it was. And though both of these are basically living Sahaba. Muawiyah is in Damascus, Ibn Abbas is in Medina, and they're not saying, how can the Ummah be divided? Neither did Ibn Abbas say, oh, you know, we should change again, maybe we should make up one extra day. No. They understood that Damascus has its own siding, Medina has its own siding, and no big deal whatsoever. Now, of course, in our times, the issue is complicated because Quraib came to Ibn Abbas maybe two weeks after the beginning of the month. Ibn Abbas did not get this information the first night of the month. He got it in the middle of the month. And therefore, there's not much he can do other than to say maybe make up a day. In our times, we don't have that problem. Immediately, instantaneously, the internet tells us that the moon has been spotted in such and such a country. And we have this information at our footsteps immediately. And to complicate matters, we don't have a united political entity in North America. Unlike in Saudi Arabia, in Pakistan, in, Mar in, in Mauritania, there is a united body, a political government that is Islamic in nature, and therefore when they declare Eid, the Muslims by and large follow. And if somebody goes against this, there's such a minority, the government has declared it on a particular day, and therefore there is no or very little ikhtilaf. Well, the problem comes in North America, and in the Western world, there is no united authority. There is no one governing body, and therefore, the communities have to decide and even the communities don't have the right of legislation. Suppose we in this masjid decided to follow, uh, let's say, the Isna or let's say the visual moon sighting uh, in North America, which is different than what we're doing this year. Suppose we decided to do this and we announced it. We have no authority to, to force anybody. There is no legal weight as a minority in a secular democracy and there are positives and negatives to that. There is no legal enforcement and therefore Every Muslim has to follow his or her own conscience in this regard. There's nothing we can do other than tell you this is our opinion. Now, in my humble opinion, the strongest fiqh opinion would be that every country or every matla, they call it, every single region should have its own visual sighting. Visual. Because I don't believe that we should simply base it on complete calculations and ignore the visual sighting of the moon. This is not an opinion that we find in the classical books and I hesitate to endorse it. This is my opinion. Nonetheless, in this community, and I want to make a point very frank here so we understand what is happening here. In this community, before I came, the local masajid had agreed to follow Saudi Arabia. That whenever Saudi Arabia announces it, they will follow Ramadan and end Ramadan accordingly. Now I say in all fairness and honesty, there is no fiqh opinion in the classical books of fiqh that links Ramadan to Saudi Arabia or to Arabia or to Mecca and Medina. There is no fiqh position that would uh, do so. Because the beginning of the month in Ramadan of Saudi Arabia should have nothing to do with any other country, just like the prayer timings in Mecca have nothing to do with the prayer timings in Memphis. Suppose they pray Maghrib at 7 p.m. Does that mean we should pray Maghrib at 7 p.m.? It's not really relevant to us. And the Ummah has always been of a different opinion. As I said, the Muslims in Andalus could never have followed Arabia. It's simply not possible for them to have done so. Nonetheless, because this community of Memphis, Tennessee has been united on its beginning and end of the month, then I believe that for the sake of this unity, we should ignore these differences of fiqh and come together as a community because our Prophet ﷺ said, Yadullahi al jama'a, that Allah's blessings and Allah's hand basically is over the congregation, over the jama'a. And therefore, if the community has been united, and it has been united, and this is a blessing for the Memphis community. If you look at many other cities in North America, they are not united. And the same city would have multiple Eids, each one of which is 5,000, 10,000. You go to New York, you go to Chicago, you go to Los Angeles, you even go to Houston, which used to be united until recently. And you find massive congregations on Eid day of different days. And one, one year in Houston, we had three Eids, each of which had thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, three Eids. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And this is obviously not good. And therefore, because this community of yours has been united, even though I personally don't like following this position of following Saudi Arabia, because it's not relevant to our fiqh and to our 
uh, moon sighting, nonetheless, there is a hadith in Sunan al-Tirmidhi in which the Prophet ﷺ said that uh, that your fasting is considered to be the day you begin your fasting. And your fitr is the day that you have your Eid. Now what does this mean? What the Prophet is consoling us is, look, even if you made a mistake, suppose somebody saw the moon, and some madhab say you need two people minimum. And he says, no, I swear I saw the moon. But he, there was no two witnesses. So the community will say no. Later on we discover there was another witness, he didn't come forward. What should we do? Let's say, for example. The Prophet is saying, look, if you made a mistake, don't worry about it. Your, your psalm is the day you all began to fast. And your fitr, your Eid, is the day you all break your fast. It's a beautiful hadith which should give us consolation. That even if there's a mistake in this regard, inshallah Allah will overlook it and the fact that the community has come together and they are fasting together and breaking their fast together, inshallah this is great. One day we hope that we can change the position of this community and make it for national moon sighting. This is the position I strongly believe in, that we should all visually see the moon in our national locale, not just in Memphis, but anybody in America or Canada, if they see the moon, I say that this is the position we should follow. And this is the position of many bodies. One year, ICNA did it. Another year, the moonsighting.org. This is the position of many scholarly bodies. Uh, and I would say the majority of the Muslims of North America are beginning to follow this position. Maybe one day, even in this community, we can implement it until that happens. Alhamdulillah, the fact that we are united is a great thing and therefore we leave it at that.